I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network, and I'm having a chat with Remy Piet, who is Senior Director at America's Market Intelligence. Thank you for joining me today, Remy. My pleasure, Scott. So today we're going to have a look at Colombia. Specifically, earlier in December, just a few days ago, there was the news that the Chinese mining company Zijin Mining would be buying the Canadian company Continental Gold for 1.4 billion Canadian dollars. So they are after Continental's flagship project, which is located in Antioquia. It is a gold and silver project with 3.7 million ounces of gold and 10.7 million ounces of silver. So that's quite a lot of precious metals to shake a stick at. So Remy, this is not the first uh, merger or acquisition of 2019, as we all know. And as we all know as well, Zijin Mining has been on quite a bit of a buying spree over the past two years. It's been snapping up quite a lot of projects around the world and quite a lot of companies. So what the fact that they are now going into Colombia, what does this say about the future of the mining industry in Colombia with such a such a large company now coming into the space? And, and what does it say about the future of Chinese investment in Latin America? Colombia is a recently developing mining jurisdiction in, in Latin America. It's, it's nowhere near the, the, the history of, of, of Peru, of, of, of Chile, for example, but it's, a, it's an interesting jurisdiction because you've been seeing, especially over the last few years, a few projects of you know, relative um, size uh, developing in, in, in Colombia. You got Antioquia Gold that started uh, producing their, their first ounces of gold recently. Uh, Uncle Gold Shanti is doing you know regular progress uh, in in their copper production, actually with uh, the the project in Jericho. Um, B2 Gold invested with uh, Uncle Gold Shanti and taking over the Gramarote project. So you're seeing more and more interest from large players. Uh, and international investors in Colombia. Now, the the the, the jewel in the crown was definitely Continental Gold. It's a, it's a project that had been, you know, uh, developed fairly successfully under the presidency of of Mateo Restrepo, who was a uh, president of, of, of Continental Gold until last year. The project uh, was able to, you know, successfully deal with a series of informal miners of presence of, of security issues uh, around the Buritica project. There's still some security issues around the Berlin project. And unfortunately, three geologists were killed uh, late last year uh, around that project. But we've seen a, a project that steadily moved forward uh, with very uh, interesting levels of reserves, um, a, a good managerial team of them coming from BHP uh, that were pulled into Continental Gold. Uh, Newmont is a strong partner inside the, inside the company. And so when we're looking at you know, this takeover from Zijin, it's definitely a, a wise move from, from the Chinese company because it is a project that is you know, uh, promised to uh, uh, provide um, a sizable production over the next few years and actually can rely on, on some high level of, of support uh, from the local mayor, from the communities. I'm, I'm really going to be in, the in talking with uh, with uh, some of those stakeholders and with the, the newly elected governor of Antioquia uh, next week. And we definitely have been very instrumental in trying to stabilize and, and encourage towards the development of sustainable mining projects in Antioquia. Now, when you're looking at, at Colombia as a whole, Antioquia, as I'm saying, the, uh, the, the perspective are, are relatively right in Antioquia. There's an understanding of uh, the fact that mining can be uh, uh, a strong um, avenue for development, uh, especially in remote areas of the of, of the of the province of Antioquia, uh, if it's done right, and that's the key caveat here. You have to be very careful when you operate in in, in Colombia of of understanding the step by step approach and the kind of let's say incremental uh, alliance development that that is needed to be successful operating in mine in Colombia. There's, there's a stronger history of opposition to such projects that you might have in Chile, for example, that you might have in more, let's say, uh, mature jurisdiction. But if you actually understand and you operate um, with, uh, 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 let's say, a sustainable approach to mining projects, then you can be extremely successful in Colombia. 
Um, and, and that's what, as I was mentioning, Content Goal was, was able to do over the last few years. Uh, that's why it has been seen as a very uh, interesting source of uh, you know, target for investment. And that probably that's what Zijin has, has seen also before pulling the trigger on, on this asset. Um, what's going to be very interesting to look at is how does Zijin then continue operating this, this, this project? Uh, there's a certain level of uh, of worry in Colombia when looking at investment from China. Uh, there's, you know, some uh, bad history in neighboring countries of, of Ecuador with the Mirado mine or even in Peru with some of the uh, uh, operation uh, such as Las Bambas, but also, you know, Rio Blanco, which is owned by Zijin, has been in strong opposition from communities. And therefore, obviously, what, what we're seeing from, from uh, members of the community is that they actually... Uh, study and, and, and analyze Zijing of, on the light of, you know, what are, what is the track record and what is the history of Zijing of operating mines in, a, in, in Latin America and Colombia. And, and the history of Rio Blanco might be an area for concern for, for those communities and Zijing has to be aware of this. So this is not Zijin Mining's first foray into Colombia? Well, it is in Colombia, but it's not. It's not in Latin America. I mean, the, um, Rio Blanco is actually based uh, next to Pura in northern Peru. Uh, it's a project that uh, was very poorly uh, developed by uh, a British company before being purchased by by Zijin Mining. It had led to a, a referendum in 2007, where close to 97%, if I remember well, of the voters actually voted against the development of mining in uh, uh, in the Rio Blanco uh, site. And Zijin until now has tried to appease communities, has tried to work with them. But unfortunately, I feel at least that's the criticism from communities uh, around the Rio Blanco and around Pura uh, on, on this is that some of those roundtables, some of those processes are actually probably not developed with, you know, uh, a, a clear understanding of what it means to uh, to operate with communities as partners of, of a mining project and therefore receive acceptance and ensure social license to operate. Um, and so this is the, 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 the kind of concerns that usually, you know, Latin American populations and probably most populations see when they're, they see an investment from a, from a Chinese company is that they are, they are concerned about the fact that, you know, the, 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 the level of, of understanding of, uh, of Chinese companies onto the way that you have to operate in complex jurisdictions such as Latin America is probably not up to par as it would be the case with Australian or Canadian companies, meaning that you have to, you know, do your homework. You have to understand uh, all the complexities of relationship at the local, municipal, uh, provincial, and national level. You have to engage uh, seriously with building alliances and creating value for the territory with those different actors. And not only when there's an issue, uh, go directly through your embassy in a capital city or pressure the national government. Uh, because this actually is extremely short-sighted and usually doesn't yield any results. That's especially the case in Colombia. Um, it was the case also in Peru, where the capacity from the government in Lima to uh, support mining projects that are located either in, in Moquegua, in Arequipa, or in the north of the country, uh, such as Cajamarca or Pura, has been extremely limited. And we're seeing this as a result with Las Bambas, Tia Maria, Conga, Rio Blanco, all those projects that are right now halted. Uh, it is even more the case in Colombia, uh, where the structure of the country is much more, let's say, federal in its uh, in its nature. Uh, most of the decision making in in Bogota is only limited to uh, fiscal policies and and some level of regulation, which is very important. But when you're trying to be able to operate successfully a project in Colombia, it's more important to build the alliances at the provincial level, meaning at the level of the governor of Antioquia, rather than at the level of, of the. Uh, the national government. And then and, and I, I guess it would be very important for Zijin to understand this uh, and, and continue the good work made by you know, Continental Gold over the last three to five years uh, and to, to build a, a very successful projects uh, in, in Bolitica. Okay, so given that uh, indeed it's their first foray into Colombia, from a, from a other companies' points of view and from other investors' point of view from the West, is this a sign that they should be investing more into more into Colombia if there's now so much interest from uh, such a different different part of the world from such a different jurisdiction from from Zijin Mining, which has uh, traditionally uh, well in the past few years been been snapping up projects in in Europe, from what I've been keeping an eye on. 
Well, Zijin is present in Europe. They're present in Congo also, um, and Serbia. I mean, there's, there's a series of different projects that they have, and, and as I said, north of Peru. Um, from the perspective of, of other, other mining companies, it's always interesting for other mining companies to see newcomers in the sector, and especially newcomers with the capacity to invest uh, as Zijin has. Uh, when you look at Colombia specifically in terms of large actors, you do have BHP is present, but in, in, in the coal sector in La Guajira, uh, so north of the, of the, of the country, uh, you do have uh, other important actors such as Angul Golo Shanti uh, that was until recently operating three projects, uh, Gramalote, Quebradona, uh, La Colosa, all of them being still into the, uh, the development stage. Uh, La Colosa is frozen for the moment after a negative uh, local vote. Uh, Gramalote has been um, developed with B2 Gold and now it's going to be operated specifically, uh, B2 Gold being the major uh, entity here and Quebradona seeing you know steady progress uh, and you had Newmont also having a minority stake inside uh, in, inside Continental Gold but that means that there were still fairly a fairly limited amount of large uh, mining companies uh, able to develop industrial mines in in, in Colombia and as opposed to uh, Peru or as opposed to uh, uh, to to to, Peru, to to Chile there's no barrack there's no uh, um, there's no Rio Tinto uh, there's limited large industrial miners in, in Colombia uh, up to today. So the arrival of the gene is always uh, can always bring some some strong uh, incentive to attract other investors and create you know better alliances within the mining sector in Colombia. However, the risk is all there that if the gene arrives with a lack of understanding of the uh, local situation with some practices that have unfortunately plagued other mining, uh, uh, Chinese mining miners in, in Latin America. And I'm not mentioning Zijing here. I'm more looking at, for example, as I said, Mirador, Avico Corriente in, uh, in Ecuador. This also can hold the, the, the seeds for uh, uh, a destruction of the perception that mining can be a positive force for the development of local economies. Something that you know, several miners, as I said, Angulo Shanti or Newmont have been working extremely hard to achieve uh, in Colombia, and so it will be very important for Zijin to understand this, to operate in, in uh, collaboration with uh, other mining companies in Colombia and to know how to navigate the very complex layers of political uh, power and influence in, in Colombia, uh, not only, as I said, at national level, but more than anything at, at the local and, uh, and provincial level, and understand also the specific risks. I mean, you do have in Buritica, uh, the history of, of a strong presence of informal miners. Some of them were actually linked to cartels such as the Clan del Golfo. You still have a resurgence of uh, far guerrillas, dissidents next to the Berlin sites, uh, and therefore uh, uh, issue of security risks. Now, when I say that, I probably you know scare a lot of investors. The thing is, it's actually very possible to operate successfully a, a, a mining project but you have to be aware of those risks and you need to be able to put in place the right strategies to mitigate those risks. If you do so, then you will be absolutely successful in, in, in Colombia. But if you arrive with an outsider mentality and trying just to replicate uh, you know, processes that might have been to some extent successful outside of Latin America, that have somewhat failed right now in Peru, uh, will, and that will definitely fail in, in Colombia in the future, then you have a recipe for disaster in, in Colombia. Uh, I trust that Zijin will have the capacity to reach out to your knowledgeable sources and people with a strong track record of how to work with those above the ground risk in Colombia. And then that would be a very strong incentive for further development of mining sector in Antioquia and in Colombia in general. Okay, so so given that you've just mentioned uh, FARC, so, so the last time we talked about Colombia, it was shortly after the uh, the former leaders of uh, FARC announced that they'd be taking up arms again. Um, is there do, do you have any any update on how that situation is looking? And linking that to Zijin, does does Zijin have this? So does it itself have a track record? of uh, being able to work in areas with such uh, uh, out in the open conflict between the government and distant groups? Uh, w when you're looking at Zijin, Zijin doesn't have the track record as of operations in, in, in Colombia and Colombia has, has a unique set of, of different uh, actors uh, that can actually negatively impact uh, a mining sector. However, Continental Gold 
is actually fairly strong, especially in terms of its managerial capacities. There are some very good employees at the senior level in Continental Gold. And therefore, you know, even if you have a takeover of the operation, you actually do not, you still have a, a, a continuity in the, in the way that, you know, that the company is run on the ground. When you're looking at the, at the broader picture of insecurity in Colombia, uh, we had mentioned indeed the, uh, the call uh, from uh, two main uh, actors, uh, Marquez Santrich, to take uh, again arms in, in Colombia. Um, this has been more than anything, you know, uh, encouraged from the uh, external influence of Venezuela trying to, uh, to create havoc in, in Colombia in retaliation for what they call the, uh, the Colombian interference in Venezuelan affairs. Uh, and so you have this, this uh, an antagonism between Venezuela and Colombia, which is very much at play there. However, if you look um, at, the, at, the, at the larger historical perspective on this, clearly the level of insecurity and activity from guerrillas in Colombia has been reduced over the last 10 years. Uh, you do have a formalization of, uh, of former FARC uh, into a political party that is now running for elections. You do still have obviously some dissidents that have, you know, gone back into informality and have operated with a, a limited amounts of kidnapping and, and definitely a, a rise of, of, of coca production to be able to finance uh, some of their operations. But we're nowhere near Colombia 20 years ago. Uh, and so that, that, that's actually a, a positive element on this. Um, there are uh, factors that actually can be worrying, especially the way that you know, Ivan Duque has turned his back to the uh, um, peace process in Colombia and has defunded a series of the uh, policies and programs to try to encourage former guerrilla members to uh, formalize their activity and just rejoin uh, you know, traditional society by operating small businesses. So since those policies and programs have been defunded, uh, they have been less successful than most people were, were, were expecting. But still, the, 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 let's say the, the structural tendencies is towards the pacification of Colombia, uh, something that should not be exaggerating because the risks still exist. They do exist specifically, as I was mentioning, for Continental Gold around the, uh, the Berlin site, where you do have attempts at um, you know, trying to, uh, to uh, collect uh, money from different operators, uh, clear uh, risk for uh, sequestration and kidnappings if you actually do not um, you know, follow clear security protocols. Uh, so all, all, this, all this has to be, take, to be taken into, into account, but we're very far from uh, the situation that, that occurred 20 years ago, and we're very far from very even much more insecure jurisdictions in Africa specifically, for example. Uh, so there are ways to, uh, to operate successfully in Colombia, and I, and I hope that Inid Zijin will, will be wise enough to, uh, to go through uh, successful third parties in Colombia and uh, and also uh, trust some of their managerial assets right now that have been doing a very good job over the last few years. Fantastic. Well, I think that we will leave it there then. Thank you so much for taking the time to give us an update on the situation in Colombia and with Zijin Mining. Happy to, Scott. Take care. And that was Remy Piet, Senior Director at America's Market Intelligence. I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network. You can find us at investingnews.com and feel free to follow us at Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thanks for listening.